Hi guys, welcome back. Let's go ahead and learn how to use this funny looking device, which is known as a solderless breadboard. This goes along with your assignment uh, on Canvas, and this will walk you through how to use the components uh, in the assignment. So if we take a look at what's here on the screen, these are the things that you're going to need in order to complete the assignment. You're going to need, of course, the breadboard. Um, you're going to need a, a, an LED, so just pick any one, as long as it's not the RGB LED, which has four legs. Uh, just choose any of the ones with two legs. You need a resistor. Uh, for now, we're not going to worry about what value. Um, use any of the blue resistors that you have in your kit. Uh, you'll need a power source, of course. A couple wires. I would recommend a red and a blue or a red and a black. And you're going to need the Arduino. So let's go ahead and walk through how these components work individually. So let's start with the breadboard. And I'm going to set all the other stuff aside for a minute. Because the point of this is to learn how to use the breadboard. And um, as it shows you in the diagram uh, on this assignment, these holes are all connected to each other in different ways. And so I like to use a different breadboard when I teach this. I like to use this demonstration board um, that I've made because it helps us understand how these wires are all connected and, and how it actually works. So if I flip it over, I've removed some of the covering uh, of the breadboard. And you can see on this side, underneath it, there's a bunch of wires running in different directions. So I'm going to pull this breadboard back up. We'll do side by side so you can kind of imagine what they look like. Um, along the rows, which are numbered and lettered in a grid system. So for example, this is row one right here, and this is uh, column A. So this hole right here on the breadboard is 1A, B, C, D, E, and it goes, on this breadboard it goes from 1 to um, 63 is the last row. And then over on this side it goes F, G, H, I, J. You'll notice this channel running down the middle. That's significant because if you look at the breadboard that's turned upside down, this is, well this would be row 1 over here, a, B, C, D, E, you'll notice that only those are connected. The other row 1 uh, holes are not connected. So if I plug something into row 1A, it'll connect to row, uh, hole 1, sorry, if I plug something into hole 1A, it'll also connect to hole 1B, 1C, 1D, 1E, but not these over here because that channel splits it. So the way that looks is basically you take one of your prototyping wires like this one and you just plug it in like so and then you take another wire or another component and you plug it into one of the others so that would be a connect two connected wires you can see they're in the same row and then on the same side of the breadboard if I move the blue wire over to here they would not be connected this is important because we use DC current which stands for direct current and direct current requires a complete closed circuit. If there's any openings in the circuit, things won't work. So this jump between this row and this row is an opening. There's nowhere for the electrons to go. And so that wire and that wire are not connected to each other. Then we'll also notice down the side, there are these uh, lines marked with a plus and a minus, And right next to them are other rows. This is important because as we get better and better at prototyping, we start adding more and more components. When we look at the Arduino, we're going to see that there's only one 5 volt pin uh, on the entire board. And if we have two components that each need 5 volts of electricity, how do we do that? Well, the way we do it is we take the Arduino and we connect the 5 volt pin, which is right here, to the positive row right here. And now every hole in this row is connected to that 5 volt pin. So if I needed to run some power to an LED, and then to a motor, and then maybe to a sensor, I can just run wires off this row onto the main part of the breadboard and use it. We can do the same thing with the ground. There are more ground pins on the Arduino, but there's still only three. 
One of them is right here next to the 5 volt pin. So if I plug that blue wire into that ground pin, and I plug it into there, now every hole in this row is connected to that ground pin. And we use ground pins a lot. We don't always use the 5 volt pin for everything that we do, but we always have to have a ground pin, so that's especially useful um, as we're doing our prototyping. So we're going to learn how to use this breadboard today and continue to use it um, really for the rest of the semester um, or the rest of the quarter in this case. So remember this visual of when I remove the bottom, there's all these connections. These columns are connected to each other. Uh, the, the red side is connected to each other. The blue side is connected to each other. Same thing over here. And then all these rows are connected to each other going in the other direction. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's go ahead and do something with it. What we're going to do in this example is we are going to connect something to that 5 volt pin on the Arduino. And the way we have to do it is we have to complete, we have to make a complete circuit that is closed for electrons to flow. Electrons will flow from the 5 volt pin on the Arduino only if the circuit is also connected to the ground. So I like to start with the red wire connected to the 5 volt pin which is right here. So we can look at that and see that wire is connected to 5 volts. And we're going to pick any row on the breadboard to start building our components from. So let's go with row 30 right here and I'll put that um, wire in hole 30A. Now, next thing we need to do is start putting some components in the circuit. Um, if I were to plug the blue wire into that row and then plug it back into ground, I would have a closed circuit, but I would have exactly the wrong kind of closed circuit. I would have what's called a short circuit because there's very little resistance on these wires and that would allow the electrons to flow almost unimpeded back and forth and you never ever want to do that. Same way you don't ever want to leave them out like this and touch them together with the power on because that would be completing a short circuit. It'll burn up the Arduino and you could hurt yourself. It could cause something else to burn as well. Um, so at the minimum you'd be replacing an Arduino um, but um, at the most you could hurt yourself. So don't do that. And you'll notice that I haven't connected the power yet. Wait till the very end to connect the power. Um, because then that reduces the chance of a short circuit. So I'm going to pull that out again so I don't accidentally do that. I'm going to plug that back into row 30. And I'm going to put my next component in. My next component that I want to put in is this one. It's called a resistor. Now your resistor looks similar to this. Again, it doesn't matter which one you use as long as you're using one of the blue ones. Resistors, it, for resistors it does not matter which direction you plug them in. Unlike some components, a resistor is basically the same as a wire. You can plug in either side in either direction and it'll work. So I'm going to put one end of the resistor in hole 30C. So now that resistor is connected to the red wire. And I'm going to bend the resistor this direction and put the other end in 25C. So I've just jumped over. Let me hold that up so you guys can see it. Okay. Next thing I want to put in there is, a, is the LED. Now, why did I put the resistor in first? Um, well, you may have looked at the, uh, the um, remote assignment for today, and, and uh, one of the things in the video there shows that you always want to put a resistor uh, in a circuit with an LED because you burn the LEDs up if you don't. Um, the Arduino doesn't produce a lot of power, um, about one amp of current, but that one amp of current is enough to burn these up almost immediately. If you ever put one of these in a circuit and you don't have a resistor in the circuit, the chances are good that you're going to burn it up pretty quickly. Even if you don't burn it up quickly, it's going to wear out um, much more quickly than, than we've got in the class. So I'm going to connect this LED. Unlike the resistor, the LED has to be plugged in the right way. If you'll notice, this LED has 
two wires coming from it. These are called leads. One of them is longer than the other. The longer one on this side is called the anode with an A and the shorter one on this side is called the cathode with the C. Your instructions for this assignment tell you where to plug each one of these in. But basically, the anode always has to be on the positive side of the circuit and the cathode always has to be on the negative side. So the anode is the plus side. The red wire comes from 5 volts, that's the plus side. Uh, ground is negative, 5 volts is always positive. So, which one goes in row 25? The anode does. So I'm going to plug the anode in row 25 in A, and I'm going to plug the cathode in 24 in A. And so now our updated circuit looks like that. Now, one thing left. We do not have a closed circuit yet because, as you can see, electrons can flow from 5 volts to the resistor to the LED, but they're not going to do that until we close the circuit. And the end of the circuit is always going to be the ground. So I'll plug my blue wire into the cathode side. I'm just going to plug it into 24C like that and then bring it back to one of my ground pins right here. Any ground pin will do. They're all the same no matter what. So you can see where those are connected right there and you can see how they're put together right there. Now if we've done everything like expected and all our components are working, when we take our power and plug it in we should get some light. So I'm going to turn this sideways and I'm going to plug it in. And there we go. Immediately we have light, um, we have a closed circuit, we have some resistance on the circuit, and um, we've used the breadboard to make our first prototype. So you give it a try. When you're done uh, and it works, go ahead and take a short video of you building the circuit, putting it all together and plugging it in. Um, demonstrate that you know which side's the anode, which side's the cathode, and you know not to plug things in until you're all done. Then when you're done with that, if you want to try some other stuff out, you could do something like this. You could take your DC motor and try to plug it into a circuit instead of an LED and see what happens there. Um, DC motors, as you can tell by the wires, have a polarity setting just like an LED, so you need to be aware of which side's positive and which side's negative. Um, if you do everything correctly, the fan blades will spin for you. And if you want to make it even a little more complicated, see if you can figure out how to use this limit switch. Um, you won't damage anything if you put it in incorrectly. Um, it just won't work. But see if you can use the limit switch to turn either the LED off and on or the, uh, the DC motor off and on and make a little bit of a switched system there. So if you're interested in trying that out, there's a couple extra things you can, you can do that with. Um, Alright, let me know if you have any questions and we'll see you in class.